three, two, one. All right, hello everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Brian Tessier with Remax Advanced Realtors, and I'm super excited to talk to the CEO of Module, Brian Gaudio. Not only does Brian have an awesome first name, but he has an awesome product, and he's going to tell us about it. And I've got a couple questions too. So, Brian, let's just start off with, um, you know, a lot of people do not know who Module is, what Module is. How did you guys come to fruition? What are you guys? Sure. Well, thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to be here. So we are a two and a half year old startup company born and raised here in Pittsburgh. Uh, we operate out of the East End out of a startup accelerator called Alpha Lab Gear. Um, and so what Module's doing is we are redesigning home ownership for the 21st century. Don't overbuild, don't overbuy. Buy the amount of house you need today. Add on as your family grows, as your income grows, as your needs change. So we're really thinking about home ownership in a different way, where we deliver someone a right-sized, energy-efficient, really well-designed starter house that can be expanded upon as a customer's needs change. I think that's great. I mean, to my viewers, I don't know much. Usually I know a lot about the person I'm interviewing. I'm going to be learning with you guys about Module. I'm super excited about it. Um, I've gone away to a bunch of different conferences and seminars, and they always talk about um, efficiency and smart homes and all that, but they've never talked about the concept that Module has where what Brian just said, he's going to probably dig into more as we go along. So super excited. Um, there aren't a lot of modular home builders, Brian, but there are some that are starting to come around. So what makes you guys, and I ask everybody to interview this, what makes you, what's your differentiation point? What makes you guys different? Sure. So... What is interesting is because the demographics in our country are changing, we have this huge number of millennials that are entering the age of home ownership. They're getting married later, fewer kids, and they're burdened with student loan debt. So they're a different buyer than the buyer of the 20th century. Um, they're looking for new answers when it comes to housing the same way that those baby boomers. So we have a lot of baby boomers now in the housing market, and they're looking to downsize. They're empty nesters, their kids are away, and they're trying to figure out what do I need to buy? And so what's common about those two parts of the market is they don't need as much space is what many of those home builders are putting out there. Right. And that's really the market that we're addressing. And what's unique about what we're doing is that as a home buyer is living in a house, their family might be changing, their economic situation might be changing, or even their tastes. And so all of our houses are designed to be upgraded, expanded, and um, basically changed over time. That's really what's unique. The other piece of what we're doing that's interesting, which you mentioned, is um, modular or prefab construction. And so parts of our homes are being built off-site in a factory-controlled environment, so with some precision semi-automated factory environment. And we're leveraging that for a couple of reasons. Um, one, there's much better quality control um, in the factory environment. So you know, weather is not an issue when we're thinking about finishing doors and windows and things like that. Um, but the other is the potential of reducing the actual timeline for construction. Because if you think about it, when you're building in Pittsburgh, and we're under construction right now in a house, um, typically you have to be waiting for the foundation to be dried and cured before you can bring in the crew to start basically the two building the walls, you know, erecting two by fours and top plates and bottom plates. But what's neat about off-site construction is at the same time as our local contractors building the foundation, we can actually be building the walls, floors, and roofs in the factory. And so we're reducing the timeline of construction a little bit. So that's something else that's unique about uh, what we're doing. Yeah, I think it's phenomenal. I've been telling a lot of people when you hear modular built home, it's, you know, you want to wash away what you thought of before. It's not the little plastic built home. It's it's much better construction if it's built in a controlled environment. And I listed a resale that was not not constructed by you guys. It was a modular mm -hmm. home by somebody else in Sewickley for seven hundred thousand um, dollars. Yeah. yeah. So it was and it was it was high end stuff. So let's uh, viewers forget about the old modular home. It's it built in a controlled environment. Much better construction. Um, you've got to check it out. And that leads me to my next question: Is you know what type of projects do you have? Or what's going on? Sure. So as a company who has started basically in 2016, you know, we had to go from zero and we actually, I was walking around the city of Pittsburgh, we had architecture models, right? So I went to architecture school. Um, and so my background is working in architecture out in Los Angeles and Mississippi abroad. And we went from little architecture models in 2016 to actually building this uh, right behind me in 2017. 
that was sort of our first uh, prototype, if wow. you will. Now, this is not a full house. This is actually a backyard home office space. We call it the demo wow. unit. Um, we partnered with Comcast, who outfitted with their smart home technology, their latest line of smart home tech. So this was kind of a proof of concept. And while it, it's not a full house, it showed our capability in design and construction and sort of mobilizing the, the unit to get it to the site. So it was a really fun project. Um, it's actually been at several locations around the city of Pittsburgh. It was over on the north side at Alloy 26. There's a co-working space on the north side. So people were able to book this as a conference room. Wow. Um, it made its way over to Homestead in front of the public library for a one day activation. Um, and then it's been in Uptown, actually on a vacant lot in Uptown for a while. And so this was actually the first project that we built. And it was just to show customers what we were capable of. Uh, it's 200 square feet. It doesn't have you know plumbing and things like that. But it was a fun experiment. And after that, that's when we launched our website with the actual full designs of our houses, which range essentially from as small as 600 square feet of one bedroom, one bath, up to 1,700 square feet, which is our duplex model. So we built this. We started taking reservation deposits on our websites. And so people could go online, look at the different designs, put in some of their information about what, where they are in the buying process. And then we can take a phone call with them. So with that and our, and our basically this kind of online 21st century onboarding process, we've been able to get our first customer, um, which we're building a home for right now in the city of Pittsburgh uh, in the Friendship neighborhood. So that's super cool. Where is that project currently at now? So we, that customer came through our reservation portal. So they went online, they basically filled out a form with, here's my current needs, future needs, here's where I am from a financing perspective. And we had a couple of meetings with them. They had purchased that property several years ago with the intent of building a house there. Um, they found us, it was a good fit. We basically got them through zoning approval. Um, that was, I, that, I'm trying to think what exact date that was, but we had zoning approval. We got them a full set of building permits. We developed our final construction estimates and we're now under construction on that project, um, which we're really excited about. And the status of that project is we broke ground, I believe, in October. We started our, our uh, site work there. And we have foundations are in place. Sla the insulated, it's a super insulated slab has been poured. And actually, the, this month, we'll be craning in the off-site wow. wall panels, floor panels, and roof panels, which are being manufactured actually in New Hampshire. They're being trucked down to Pittsburgh offloaded to a lumber yard, put onto a smaller truck, and then are brought to the site in uh, friendship. And then what we'll do is we'll have a crane, basically we'll bring a crane, they will pick those panels off the truck and then set them on to the, to the super insulated slab. Um, so it'll be a really fun process to see and we're gonna document it with video. Yeah. So we'll be sure to share it with you and some of your viewers, but it, it's really fun to see how quickly the walls, floors, and roof will go up on this. That um, is so cool. I mean, that's got to be way more cool than watching builders um, nail two by fours together. <laughs> it is. It is. And so I get your um, newsletter, and I think I've seen some time lapse stuff of the foundation. Is this the same project? Same project. Yep. Viewers, um, I just posted the uh, website from Modular Housing, and I'll put in the comments after we're done with the interview. But I highly recommend going there and getting on their newsletter. They don't bombard you with. Um, stuff uh junk stuff i mean they sent us some really cool stuff they did a time lapse of this foundation being created and it's just mind-blowing it's really cool so um that needs to be my next question is i represent a lot of buyers uh, moving into the inner city of pittsburgh a lot of people are retiring to pittsburgh i have a lot of younger people that might fit your demographic that are coming out of student debt and so like that so do you have a target demographic you know it's interesting i talked about those two ends of the spectrum right and with this for i'll talk to this first project that we're working on right now so the the client um, they're married with a few kids, but the house is actually not for them. It's actually for their parents who are looking to downsize. They're getting older. And so the, our client bought the vacant lot next to their house and are building a home for their parents to live in. So it's actually a one bedroom, one bathroom, one story unit, um, because just for mobility reasons and thinking about single floor living was important, um, for their parents. And so that is an interesting market, um, because a lot of folks who are older are thinking about, do I move into a condo or do I, you know, maybe, you know, live in one of the down, the new downtown buildings that's coming up, um, or they could live in more of a neighborhood environment. So I think that's an interesting market. I do think the young professional market in Pittsburgh, we have a lot of people moving into Pittsburgh from other places around the country. And, you know, 
you being in the industry, you know that a lot of the existing stock of Pittsburgh is really old Very. and it's really dated. Now, some customers are the right fit for buying a fixer upper and spending the next two years and probably $150,000 fixing that up. And some people love that. It's a labor of love for them. Um, but there are other folks who are too busy at their job um, or they just don't have the interest of dealing with that 1905 Lawrenceville house or whichever neighborhood you're going to build in. And I think those folks are a really good fit for working with us because we make the new construction process more streamlined. Uh, we make it easier and I think we deliver a really good product. And so compared to going to try to find, okay, if I'm going to, if you don't like the existing housing stock in Pittsburgh, you have, okay, do I move out to the suburbs and maybe buy a new house out there? Or do I hire an architect and then try to find a way to hire a general contractor and do all that? What's nice about our platform is you hire module and we have our preferred manufacturer on the project, preferred general contractor. And we're basically walking you through and holding your hand through the zoning permits and approvals process. So I think that, and that sort of, customer service piece to our platform, I think really helps a buyer who might say, I don't think new constructions for me, um, reconsider that, so. Yeah, and that kind of leads into the next question. Are there any zoning issues with something like this? Because it's so new. So we're op typically we're the projects that we're working on are in R1, 2, or 3 districts. And so in those districts, typically if you can go up three stories or 40 feet. And so if you go on our website, um, modulehousing.com, you can see the different starter units that we have. And they raise from, they range from a one bedroom, one bathroom, one story unit, all the way up to three story duplex unit. And so we're building within the zoning box. So we're not expanding beyond that zoning box. And when we think about if someone's to add onto a house, it's actually taking a two story home into a three story home, which is wow. well within the zoning regs. Now that's not to be said, anytime you're working on new construction in Pittsburgh, it's likely that you'll need a zoning variance, whether that's because of setbacks or because of off-street parking. So that's typical. And we actually just went through a zoning hearing on a project uh, last week. And we came, excuse me, we came prepared with our 11 page document, right? And sat up front and basically walked through the, the, the variances and here's our site plan, here's our photos. And, and I think we're you know, becoming more experienced at that. And I, it's an important part of getting a project built it's something in the city of Pittsburgh that any customer that's considering new construction, you've got to think, all right, what variances do I need to go for? Right, yeah, we actually have a question here. Denise Doyle posted, have you considered selling packages that include the lot or is your target home buyer mm -hmm. someone uh, who already has the land? That's a great question, Denise. That's, a, that's actually a great question because, so for our first buyer, they already own the lot, but two thirds of the leads that come through our website every day don't own land. And so that's a pain point for our potential customers. So we're actually working on a strategy right now with several partners to be basically obtaining, whether it's property that's owned by a public entity or by a private entity, an option strategy where we could have an option agreement on properties that we basically evaluate and say, this property is a great fit for a module house. And so for customers who come to us and don't own land, we actually have a service for them where if they say, I want to live in X, Y, or Z neighborhood, we will then go to our partners in those neighborhoods. So some brokerage partners, you know, some public entities, and basically source property for that person that could be in the right price point um, and fits for one of our houses. So that's actually something because we heard so many customers saying, I love your product. I don't have a lot yet. So we're actually working on solving that problem for them. So. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, and as a realtor, I'm going to have to ask, you know, what, what type of relationship do you have with us? What is the incentive, et cetera? So, you know, it's something why I'm excited to, to sit with you today, Brian, because, um, you know, we get leads through our website all the time. But I think that the folks who are talking to realtors are serious about buying. And certain realtors have kind of a, you know, maybe a customer profile. Right. So customers of of X budget or X neighborhood are working with you or with another realtor. And so what we want to be doing is working with folks like you who have kind of an understanding of what the market needs in a particular neighborhood and are talking to buyers in that neighborhood. So those partnerships with realtors next year, I think, will be really important 
because once this first home is built, which is going to be finished mid Q1 next year, we're actually, our client is going to let us use it as a marketing tool. So for the first several months, we're going to be able to bring buyers in. So Brian, if you had clients who are like, I would love to work with module, guess what? You're going to be able to do that and actually see the first product, which will be really fun. That's going to be amazing. And all I can think of is partay. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, any advice um, for a resource for realtors and buyers and sellers to get some inf more information on you guys? Totally. So our website is modulehousing.com. And I would say if you are a realtor and you have customers who aren't finding the right fit with the existing product that's out there, you could email either myself or Drew, uh, Drew at modulehousing.com or Brian at modulehousing.com. Um, or you can fill out a contact us form on our webpage and say, I'm a realtor. I'd like to become a um, module preferred realtor essentially. And we can talk you through, and we actually have marketing materials that we can share with realtors who really want to become part of the fold. We're going to roll this out next year to a small handful of realtors. We want to really be working with folks who understand our product and whose customer base is already sort of aligned with what we're doing. And so if, if any realtors are interested in being involved in that program, they should reach out to Brian at modulehousing.com or Drew at modulehousing.com and, and we can talk about that. Yeah, I think um, guys, uh, buyers, sellers, and realtors, I think this is going to be a um, growing market. It, Brian, do you have any competition that you're aware of that does? Um, you know, I think honestly in, in Pittsburgh, our competition is someone looking to buy right. a house of about the same price. Um, what's interesting is as a startup company, right, we were back, if you've seen the, sh you know, the show Shark Tank, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of a little window into our world. So we're not, while we are a design build company, we're looking at how do we start this model in Pittsburgh and take this nationally. And so as a startup company, there are other prefab startups out there. Right. Um, there's an interesting group out of Austin, Texas called Casita with a K. So they're doing the smart mobile tiny home, a really interesting product. I'd say, I always say if an iPhone turned into a house, it would be Casita. So that's <laughs> Casita. They're out of Austin. Um, there's a company in Los Angeles called Plant Prefab. Um, that does some really beautiful kind of high-end uh, custom prefab homes, kind of like Dwell Magazine homes out right. of Los Angeles. Um, there's also another good modular builder locally here, um, EcoCraft. So Elliot Fabri of EcoCraft has done some really good work locally, I think. Um, so he's another person who's using modular and off-site construction to deliver this unique product. Um, so those are some of the, I guess, the other folks out there working on this. Interesting. Now, why are, why are we in Pittsburgh? Why have you guys decided to make Pittsburgh your home? Yeah. So that's a good question. I grew up in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, and I had been a little backstory on me. Okay. Went to architecture school, um, and then for a time, I was out in Los Angeles. I was working in their blue sky at Walt Disney Imagineering. So designing a Disney wow. theme park. So no budget, super cool, super creative individuals. But I really wanted to use my skills as, as a designer to work on real world problems. So after that, was in Biloxi, Mississippi, post Katrina, working for a nonprofit architecture firm on affordable housing. Spent some time in the Dominican Republic doing a Fulbright wow. scholarship, um, learning about green infrastructure and how cities are growing. And then from that, worked on a documentary. So learning about the housing crisis, the global housing crisis. So the film was called Within Formal Cities. So a friend and I directed this documentary where we interviewed architects, designers, governments, community planners wow. from South America, from cities in South America with, that had really challenging housing problems. And I learned some really interesting insights um, from that project. And one of the insights from that project was this thing called incremental housing. And so in South America, you know, people don't have mortgages there like we do in the US. And really? so what they have to do oftentimes is they save up enough money to build one room of their house. So they get enough money to buy the concrete block and build one room. And they save enough money and they build the next room. And they continue to do that. And so that, that's this way of living in other parts of the world that's really common. Um, and so in South America, the government saw that, said, that's really interesting and cool. How could we leverage this to build affordable housing at scale in South America? So there was an architecture firm, actually. And I know I'm getting into a story here, but um, it's an, I think it's an interesting uh, concept. So there's an architecture firm in South America that said, wow, these people are building their house 
piece by piece. What if we worked with the government and built a customer half of a good house? So basically kitchen, bathroom, and one bedroom. Right. And they designed it so that the customers could DIY the rest of the house. And that concept took off in South America. And so after finishing the documentary, I'm like, this has a really good kernel of an idea. How do we take this idea, bring it to the U.S.? And because I'm from Pittsburgh, I uh, wanted to come back and affect change in the city that I grew up in because I love Pittsburgh and I'm passionate about being from Pittsburgh. So I said, if we're going to start a company that's trying to create better housing solutions, let's do it in a place that we care and love uh, for, really. Well, I'm glad you're here. I mean, with Pittsburgh growing leaps and bounds, I think something like this is great where you can start at one size and keep adding on. I just think that's phenomenal. Um, one last question, because we're really out of time, and that is, do you do you see yourself expanding out of the Pittsburgh area, the Pennsylvania area? What are your plans? What's the five-year plan? Great. Um, starting in Pittsburgh, we're going to be born and bred here in Pittsburgh, but we actually get requests from around the country, from right. California, from Florida. I see us expanding into the kind of mid-Atlantic market. So Philadelphia is a city where we've had several property owners reach out to us actually. Um, even some several small scale developers that are looking to do maybe a townhomes, like 10 townhomes. So Philadelphia, DC area, those are, we've, we've been getting a lot of interest from those areas. So we've had several meetings. Um, I don't think we'll do anything next year necessarily in those cities. Um, but the plan is to kind of build a model here in Pittsburgh that works for this infill development because we've got 30,000 vacant lots in Pittsburgh. Find the kind of recipe that works in Pittsburgh and then go to cities like Philly and other locations in the mid-Atlantic Northeast area. Right. That's awesome. Um, viewers, I hope you guys got a lot out of this. I mean, I didn't know what to really expect out of this. I've learned a lot. There's a lot more questions we can ask. The interview would take forever. So we'll probably do another one a couple months from now. And I'll probably do a Facebook Live from their project once it's completed. Try to get the marketing out there. Brian, I know you're busy. I mean, this guy was on the phone on the way into this meeting. And whenever I physically went there, I think he was in two meetings at the same time. So I know you're busy. I really appreciate your time. All right. Thank you, Brian. Really right, enjoyed guys. it. And uh, I'll be listening and tuning into the next one you do. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in.